This is a demo of Stitch Painter 3, which is a grid-based design program for Macintosh and Windows computers. Stitch Painter can be used for multiple textile arts, basically anything that requires a grid. This includes knitting, beading, stitchery and needlework, and any other art or function that requires colored pencils and graph paper. Let's take a look at the program. This is how I typically work and the program consists of menus that will facilitate your design process, a color palette, your tools which are integral to working in the software, and then I also like to include my history panel which records all the steps of what I'm doing as well as my brush history panel which gives me a depository for my motifs as I work. To begin, I'm going to set up my grid and my document. So the document would be how many stitches and rows do I want while I'm working. My grid is where I can control if I want my grid to be rectangular or square. And we'll go with a rectangular grid right now which is based on a 4 to 3 ratio for knitwear. So I'll just click OK and I can control that proportion very easily. And as I move my cursor around on the document, you can see down here in this corner which stitch and row I'm on as I am designing. So that's sometimes very handy to have at your fingertips. So this is my basic setup. There's lots of other panels that you can request and those are accessed through the Windows menu such as textures if I want to work maybe with a two-color yarn or simulating a calico fabric or I can choose to work with symbols if I need symbols to represent hand operations or to make the reading of a color on a printer uh, clearer so that I know that the circle represents my red especially if I want to publish and do something in black and white as a published material so I will set up with my grid, I will set up with my document, I put my panels where I want, and now I'm ready to go. So the general approach at this point is to set the colors that you want in your project. You can work from our default palette or you can build a custom palette. The fill color will be used by any tool that has a fill, such in our case it would be the pencil and these three shape tools plus our fill bucket. The line color is used by tools that are more linear, such as a straight line, uh, a curve, or the outline on a shape. So you can set these up according to your needs. If you want to change a color, you just click on whether it's the line or the fill that you want to change, and you choose a new color. And so if I want to change the next my fill color, I'll just click on F or make sure it's the current selection, and then choose a new color. So let's begin. Usually I'll start just by doodling with the pencil. And if I want, I can zoom in here a little bit so that it's bigger. I just put my cursor to wherever I want to zoom. And the fast way is just to press 2 on the keyboard. And now my grid is magnified times 2. To paint a stitch, I just simply touch the stitch and move my cursor around. And if you look, you can see the coordinates moving there on the lower left side of the document here that tells you what stitch and row of the entire document you're on. To erase a stitch, I can just touch it again and it will erase to the current background color, which is now white, and I, or I can repaint. So editing is super easy. If I want to remove a group of stitches, I can just take the eraser tool, which will erase to the background color, and then just touch the group of stitches. If I realize I've gone too far, it's really easy to back up in the panel here, in my history panel and get to the step that I want to get back to and then I can continue. Uh, we have a dropper tool which lets you find the current color that you're using. So if I wasn't sure which blue, I would just click on the dropper tool and click on the blue and it will highlight it in my palette for me. I'm going to take the marquee tool and frame off this little motif just by surrounding it and then I can double click inside and notice how now I have a brush. We call this a brush and this can be flipped and rotated, resized, etc. But I'll just do some of the simple ones. But I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to press X to flip left to right, Y to flip upside down, 
and then X I'll flip left to right again and now I've built yet a different motif and if I want I can capture that and add it to my brush history so now I can go back and forth between the two brushes depending on what I'm doing as I work once you have a brush it's really easy to start stamping it just by moving your cursor and moving it around the screen maybe I'll press one to get back to the zoomed out normal mode and then I can start adding more as I brush along if I want to fill a motif with color I can just pick a new fill color so let's go with this pretty little pink and I will fill with this actually deeper pink and if I want to let's get sort of a popper color here I'm going to zoom in I'm putting my cursor to where I want to zoom I'm going to press 2 and I can just fill in you know the little areas as well so this is the process if I want to clear my screen to start over, I can just double click on the eraser. Of course, I maybe don't want to do that, so I'm going to back up a couple steps. And again, I can back up to any point that I want. When I'm all done with my design, I can save it into our own file format so you can continue, or I can export it in a variety of file formats. So this is just a quick overview of the Stitch Painter 3 program for Macintosh and Windows. Watch other videos to see other functions of the software.